Good morning and welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is creative thought and how we generate our world really through these inspired moments of thought that uh, precede creation. So it should be a, a fun conversation. But before we get started, let's take a moment to get present and take a deep breath in through your nose and imagine all that oxygen just coursing into your lungs and filling your bloodstream with wonderful vital life force and moving into your cells and into your organs. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, any stress. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose. And imagine now bright sparkling light lighting up all the molecules in your body and your being and connecting you with the universe beyond. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension or stress. And now let's just gently press our palms together. Softly, softly, softly rub your fingers against your palms and feel how delicious that is and allow yourselves to become present right here, right now in the physical moment of uh, space and time. Good morning, Julie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wonderful to start the week with you here. This is great. So um, today we're talking about creative thought and the process of creation because any anything that we create in the world typically good morning dido good morning welcome welcome uh anything that we create in the world is preceded by the notion of creating it right so i mean in a in a personal realm i'm talking about so in our own lives um Zakaria, welcome. I'm welcome, welcome. Glad to have you here. So we were talking about creation and creativity. So if you think back on the things that you've created in your life, whether even if it's creating a new job for yourself or uh, creating a new place to live or um, any kind of new opportunity, not just creative things, you know, but experiences in our lives, you know, when you decide that you're going to go on a vacation, well, you have an inspiration about that, and you have this thought, and then the actual creation of it pr uh, proceeds from the thought. And so when we realize the mechanism of creation that we employ in our lives, we can possibly take a more deliberate approach toward it and and uh, create even more of the things and experiences that we desire. So I, I was looking, I'm thinking again, I've spoken about this a bunch of times, but I will again and again, no doubt, uh, thinking again of my friend who came up with the notion of the paradise syndicate. And it's a thought, it's a crazy, wild, bodacious, uh, bold concept. Um, for, for me, I have my concept of the eco park, which is very much aligned with this notion of the paradise syndicate and creating paradise. Um, but it's by bringing these thoughts into being that we then create the possibility or, or that we create new possibilities in the world, right? So years ago, I, uh, I, was, I took a training. It was called the EST training at that time. And it evolved into landmark education and the forum. And it's still available and around and and it is very much about shifting your your paradigm to see the world in in another way in a way of possibility and uh one of the things that had grown from 
the S training years and years ago was the idea of ending hunger on the pat on the planet, which at the time was an incredibly audacious, bold, insane idea because people assumed that hunger hunger was a fact of life. And the idea of ending hunger was outrageous. It was almost unthinkable. And there was a group of people that really just got behind the idea of ending hunger on the planet. And by propagating that idea, all kinds of solutions began to emerge, all kinds of ways to address that the, the crisis of starvation and hunger on our planet. And uh, we, we, we are constantly faced with the opportunity to generate new possibility, like the possibility of of paradise on earth, you know, um, like the possibility of uh, an eco park or uh, the possibility of sustainability, the possibility of peace on earth. In fact, there's a group called Sign, S I N E, you can find them on Facebook and also uh, compassiongames.org is uh, John Raymer, who's one of the founders of the Sign Network, but the declaration of the Sign Network is Peace on Earth by 2030. And it's having a kickoff right as we speak. Uh, this The Peace Weekend um, to imagine the crazy possibility of a peaceful planet. And what would that look like? And what would it take? And the bringing forward the concept and the idea and engaging in the conversation is where it all starts. Because uh, here's an example of how, how concept changes reality. Um, I don't remember who it was who broke the one, the, uh, the, I don't know, was it three minute mile? Uh, I'm not an athlete. So I hope I'm not destroying this whole concept here. But um, there was there was a time, uh, a time constraint that had never been beaten. And, and what came forward was the idea of breaking this record and people had thought it was impossible, but somebody didn't, somebody believed it was possible and then actually was able to break that record. And in breaking that record, they created the notion that this was indeed possible. And then all of a sudden, all kinds of other people broke that record as well. And so, the, the conversation here is to say that new realities begin with conceptualization. New realities begin with our capacity to generate ideas of possibility. And when we generate the ideas of possibility, those ideas can gain momentum and then they become manifest. Ultimately, they become manifest in our world. The idea that we could fly, you know, pre, uh, precluded all the experiments by the Wright brothers and other people of the same era, and actually back to Leonardo da Vinci and probably even before that, the notion that we could fly. And then through, through a deeper and deeper belief in the possibility, it was brought forward into reality. So my question to you is what, what kinds of things or situations or possibilities 
are you imagining in your life or can you imagine for the world that can bring forward a new possibility in the world? You know, we see these memes all the time on social media and, and in, throughout our culture, and the memes are creating a common thinking pattern that then gains momentum. And so in this conversation, we get to really look at the power and potency of our thought and its capacity to generate a new reality. And in this conversation, we recognize how important it is to be putting our attention and focus on life affirming thought and life affirming intention, because we do get to create it in the world. And so there's a certain level of vigilance that we're called to in our thinking. Uh, the the thought, thought police came up in my mind, but we get to be our own thought police in a way, you know, where we get to monitor or be conscious of the thoughts that we generate and what we're supporting through the generation of those thoughts. So what, what do we get to create? And there's, there's an exhilaration around the possibility here that I invite you to just join in and, and discover and explore with me. Like what what can we create if, as we look at the world right now? What kinds of possibilities can we create? We can create a possibility we can, of regeneration. This is, this is an idea that is gaining hold uh, with regenerative farming, with regenerating the land, with regenerating the environment. Uh, we can take it even further to regenerating our relationships with ourselves and with others. We can, what, what is this notion of regeneration? Instead of the decline that we've seen in, our, in nature and in our uh, economies, et cetera, we can be putting our attention on the notion of regeneration. And just as an example, and I've spoken about the power of questions. So our minds are like heat seeking missiles. They want to answer whatever we program them to. So when we program them to bad questions or negative uh, questions such as uh, what's wrong with me, for example, we find answers, whether we want them or not, because we've asked the question. That's just the function of our minds. So what happens when we ask good questions is the same, the same dynamic and being in the question allows a constant unfolding. So what we can ask ourselves is are things like, how, how can I be an exemplification of peace in the world? What will it look like? What will it look like to have a world of peace? What are the steps we can take to creating peace in the world? What are the steps I can take or how can I be to experience greater peace within myself, et cetera, et cetera. So we can even ask what would be a great question to ask to move me in the direction of my dreams. And then we come up with these things. And what happens is that life often presents these, these answers to these questions just by our being in the question. So it doesn't always come as a conscious answer that we hear um, 
what often happens is that life unfolds with the answer in in a present way, which is really quite miraculous, for lack of a better word. So I'm wondering about you and your experiences, and and do you notice how the things that you, you've created in your life, you've created first through a thought. And this is so with, with any kind of goals that we set for ourselves, any kind of dreams that we have for ourselves. First, there's the thought of that. And then what happens is that it gains some momentum and then gains expression in one way or another in in your life as you keep putting your attention on it so i i find this really powerful uh to recognize because we all know that it's true you know first you think i need to get a new job so then what you do is you go start looking at opportunities maybe you start thinking about what kind of job you want and you imagine what the ideal circumstances might be perhaps. And then you start thinking about possibilities that weren't even on your horizon previously. And, and then as you're engaged in that opportunity show up and people cross your path that are the perfect conduit to the new new place that you're desiring to go and and magic like that just happens over and over and over again and so i'm wondering if you have any stories you'd like to share about something that you created by having first an audacious and bold and and uh crazy thought that at least other people thought was crazy, but, and maybe even you did, but then you turned it into reality because this is, this is our power. This is our capacity. This is our capability. We, we do, we are creators. That's what we do. And so by taking a more deliberate role in our creatorship, we can create more of what we really truly do desire in life, right? So I, I invite you to look at what you do desire and what you desire not only for yourself, but for the world and imagine, start imagining it into being partly by thinking, thinking thoughts that support that vision, asking questions that generate unanticipated possibilities. And so the, this, is, this is creativity in its highest form. You know, some people say, I don't have a creative bone in my body, but the truth is you're creating all the time. And uh, creativity doesn't just necessarily show up as something that is uh, artistic, for example. Creativity is what we do every moment with the desires that we have that we put into the universe. And uh, you may or may not be familiar with Abraham Hicks, Esther Hicks, who channels a, an entity or a collective called Abraham and is all about manifesting, manifesting your desires and the mechanics of it. And uh, the, the notion is it starts with the thought and maybe, maybe what provokes the thought is a yearning, an emotion. It may be something emotional that actually precludes the thought. I'm not, I wouldn't venture to, take a stand one way or the other on that at the moment, but I, I can imagine that there's this, there's an impulse first that generates the thought and then the thought can generate more emotion and more, more momentum. And it's the emotion ultimately that powers 
the vision or the dream or the desire. And the emotion that we're looking for is the emotion of already having received or experienced that. So as we are creating a, an environment for peace on earth by 2030, for instance, what we get to do is experience that peace now. And the thing is that we don't need the outer circumstances to have that internal experience. We, all, we, we typically believe that when we get this, I'll feel a certain way. When I, uh, when I achieve that, then I'll be okay. Then I'll feel that way. And um, the truth of the matter is that we have the capacity to feel the feelings at any moment, regardless of circumstance, because our minds do not distinguish between reality and the vividly imagined. As bizarre as that seems, we really, in terms of our experience, can't distinguish the difference. So when we vividly imagine something and allow ourselves the emotional experience of its fulfillment, rather than the need or desire or longing for it. When we allow ourselves to experience the experience of its fulfillment for 17 seconds is what Abraham says, at least 17 seconds and everything thereafter is a bonus. Then, then we are putting that frequency out into the world and supporting the manifestation of that thing or circumstance that we are desiring. And so I invite all of us to participate in creating a global momentum for the experience of peace on this planet and for the experience of plenty for everyone. And that, that is a gift not only to ourselves to allow ourselves to experience that experience that's generated by the convergence of thought and emotion and desire uh, to, to bring that forward into the world, to be proactive creators of the world we desire for ourselves and each other. So creative thought, creative thought, creative emotion, and imagining beyond, beyond the constraints of our current condition. And by imagining it, by imaging it in our minds and our hearts, by experiencing it as as a reality internally, we get to shape a new world. And so let's be conscious about it and let's join together in that to be not longing for, but experiencing the having of, experiencing the presence of peace in our hearts and and imagining that propagating out into the world imagining responsible stewardship of our planet imagining restoration and regeneration uh, feeling that in our hearts and sharing that beyond our being out into the world Creating the conversation for possibility is the place from which possibility emerges. And so the invitation is to presence that possibility for ourselves and to share that presencing with others to magnify it and amplify it and multiply it out into the world because now we have an opportunity unlike any in human history to collectively come together in creating a future 
of paradise and possibility. So with that, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for being here with me, for playing with me. And please take this notion of possibility and crazy, wild, insanely visionary possibility into the future and into your life today from minute to minute where you get to choose how to feel, how to think, where to put your attention and what to create in the world. And uh, with that, I, I, I think, thank you, Julie. I so appreciate you being here. You have a great day too. And I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. I'm here every weekday morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. And we're, on, we're live on Enlightened World Network. I invite you to please check out the awesome programming on Enlightened World Network with wonderful, spiritual, loving, connected people and community. And until next time, have an amazing day creating with your wonderful, powerful, creative thought and emotion. And I hope I see you here again tomorrow. Lots of love, lots of compassion. <laughs>